Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain the concept of what is called a time division multiplexing. As you all know, what is multiplexing is, right? Multiplexing is a concept where multiple signals are actually transmitted over the same channel, okay, by uh, having, allocating different time slots between those signals, okay. So, the name time division multiplexing, why the name has come here is because I have a n number of signals, let us assume, okay. I want to transmit all the n number of signals over the common channel, okay. Now, what exactly are going to do here is, we are going to allocate different time slots for different signals. Say, the first signal will transmit at a first time slots. The second signal will transmit the same, by using same carrier, it will transmit the signal through same channel, okay. In the second slot, the third signal will transmit the signal at the third time slot using the same carrier or the same bandwidth, okay. And again, the cycle repeats, okay. So, this basic concept is called as time division multiplexing. Now, how it can be achieved, uh, okay, and how multiplexing of multiple signals can be done, let us discuss in this video. Now, as we take the samples of the signal, let us say, I have an analog signal and I want to convert that into the digital form. As you are now all aware that we have to go through three processes or three steps. The one is sampling, the second one is quantizing, the third one is encoding. Now, According to sampling theorem, we actually have to take Fs number of samples per second, right? That is Fs should be more than or equal to twice the highest frequency in the message spectrum, okay? Whenever I take the samples of the signal, fine, let us say I have this particular analog signal. Let me change the ink color over here. Just wait, yeah. So I have this particular analog signal, fine. This is my analog signal and I want to convert this, in, I want to take the samples of this particular signal. Okay, and I will take a samples at regular interval. Let me say one sample here, one, one more sample over here, the third sample over here, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one, right? If I represent uh, the samples using delta functions, it looks something like this. At every TS seconds, I will take the samples of my analog signal, right? Now, there's a time gap between these pulses. There is a, nothing is transmitted during this time gap between the pulses. Just look at this. Nothing is transmitted, right? I transmit this pulse. I wait after TS seconds, I will transmit the second pulse. After TS seconds, again, I transmit the third pulse, okay? The impulses belonging to the one signal. Now, as we can make out, as we can use this time gap between the samples, okay? And by sa transmitting the samples of the other signals during that, this time interval, okay? That means, wherever, whenever there is a gap, if I insert the samples of, say, other n minus 1 number of signals and if I utilize this time gap or a time slots between the two samples belonging to the same signal, okay, this process is actually called as time division multiplexing. That means we are actually transmitting the samples of n number of signals, okay, over this time interval, this particular time interval, whatever I have mentioned over here, this time interval, okay, and again I transmit the sample of the first signal. I will explain this concept by using a one more diagram a bit later. Fine. Now, as I told, yeah, the sampling theorem actually provides the basis for transmitting the information contained in the band limited message signal as sequence of samples. That's just now I saw, showed the impulses. Right. So, now, the important feature of the sampling process is the conservation of the time. Now, how we can conserve the time over here? By engaging the communication channel yeah, in, in this first case, you know, when I transmit only one signal, we are going to engage the communication channel for only the sampling time interval, right? And in between, there is a space. In that particular space, we are transmitting the, okay, samples of the other signals and time sharing based on the time sharing basis. This concept is actually called as time division multiplexing, okay? As I told, this is called time division multiplexing. Now, how we can implement this? How we can achieve this time division multiplexing? Now, just look at this. This is the transmitting side. This is the transmitting side. The signal is communicated uh, through the channel. And this is the receiving side, how the demultiplexing is actually done. Now, let us say I have a n number of message inputs, okay? And I want to transmit all these n number of message signals by taking the samples of those signals through a common communication channel, okay? Now, what I'm going to use over here is uh, what is called as a rotary switch. I call it as a commutator switch. Initially, all these message inputs are passed through a low-pass filter. 
I call this as anti-aliasing filters because we have to restrict the amp we have to restrict the signals uh, within certain bandwidth that is W hertz. Okay, what can happen is say this is the message speed signal which is extending up to let me say a low pass signal extending up to W hertz. Sometimes what happens is you may get a message component which is bit above the frequency of the signal is above the W hertz. And due to this, we get a problem called as the aliasing error or aliasing effect. To avoid this, we always have to restrict, we have to restrict the message signals only up to certain highest frequency called as some W hertz. So all these low pass filters are uh, designed to pass the signal between 0 to W hertz. Okay, all the low frequency components are actually passed by the low pass filter to avoid this particular problem called as aliasing error. That's why these filters are called as aliasing filters, anti-aliasing filters. Basically, they are low pass filters. And the output of these filters are connected to one of the segment of this rotate switch. So this is connected to this particular segment. This is connected to this particular segment. So like this, n number of signals are actually connected to different segments of your commutator switch. As this particular pointer moves to a different, you know, the segments, we are going to take a sample of this signal. When it is moved to this particular segment, we take a sample of this particular signal. So it is continuously rotated. Okay, for TS seconds, every TS seconds, after TS seconds, we are actually come back to the first position. This is this particular position. We take the sample, we take a sample here, we take the sample here, and after TS seconds, we take the one more sample of this first message signal. Okay, that means for every TS seconds, we are going to take a one sample each of this. Okay, now this signal is, if I represent that by using a pulses, just look at this. First sample of the first signal. Okay. And there should be a stamp gap of uh, T seconds over here. And after T S seconds, just look at this. After T S seconds, I take the second sample of the message signal because that time I'm going to complete one rotation. Okay. After one rotation, I will take the second sample of the first signal. Now, in between, just look at this. This is the first sample of the second signal. First sample of the third signal, maybe right? This is the first sample of the nth signal. So we are going to take a n number of pulses belonging to n. Uh, message signals and after that one complete rotation we take the second sample of the analog signal and this process will actually continue okay this is the pulse representation or the waveform representation of the tdm so total there are n number of signals what we are going to take in ts seconds okay and this is proper shape is given to the all these pulses okay and this is transmitted through the channel Okay, and the demodulator, pulse demodulator will demodulate the signal and it is again given to the rotary switch which call, we call it as a decommutator switch. What it does? So, we have to, very, very important thing in the TDM is we have to synchronize the rotation of these pointers. So, whenever this particular pointer is in this segment, at the same time, we should have this pointer in this particular same segment itself so that you can demultiplex and connect to the proper destination. Okay, that means the pulses of the message input 1 should go to the message input 1 here. Should, should be passed through the, this particular low pass filter. The second signal should go to the second destination, something like this. So, this can happen only when we actually synchronize the uh, rotation of the uh, pointer. Okay. So, that's what I have mentioned over here. So, suppose this is connected to this particular segment. At the same time, this is connected to this segment here. And communication happens through this particular path. Okay, when this pointer is connected to this particular segment, at the same time we have to connect this to this segment, and signal will travel through this path to the proper destination. So that means the demultiplexing of the signal is actually done by using a decommutator switch. Okay, so this concept is called as time division multiplexing. Now, what is the space so we have between the samples here? The time given is t, no? Isn't it? So, within this TS seconds, there are n number of pulses as I told earlier. Okay. The spacing between each pulse or this body, these two pulses or maybe these two pulses, it is given by what? TS by n. Okay. And the number of pulses what you are transmitting per second, it is actually nothing but the reciprocal of this time interval, which is n by TS. Okay. Or the reciprocal of this, which is n into Fs. What is Fs? Fs is nothing but it is the sampling frequency which we have taken. Okay. Uh, according to the sampling theorem okay and signaling rate okay the rate at which the signals are transmitted is given by what n into fs okay in fs hertz you are actually transmitting n number of pulses or the sampling frequency is always it is always more than 
2w correct the sampling frequency is more than 2w so r the signaling rate is actually nothing but it is more than or equal to 2n w that's what we have to tell and what is the transmission bandwidth actually required here to transmit n number of signals it is nothing but it is always half of the signaling rate okay half of the signaling rate means it is nfs divided by 2 fine now i will show you one more uh, representation okay so whenever you take the samples of the different signals over here maybe first signal second signal or third signal okay we actually get a pam type of waveform right now just look at this before that i'll erase the unwanted things yeah fine now just look at this this is another representation of the pam signal which are multiplexed so in this case i have taken three signals okay i have taken uh, no it is two signals over here the one is this one so the first signal which is a sinusoidal signal just look at this the dotted line the other one is a triangular wave the two signals are multiplexed okay n equal to 2 i can say the first sample of the first signal this is the first sample of the second triangular signal first sample second sample of the first signal this is second sample of the second signal and go on isn't it so we have a number of samples so as you can see over here we have a gap between this and this so in this particular gap we have inserted the sample of the other signals okay and we can maximum we can in general we can say we can insert the samples of n number of signals as i have shown in this particular uh, waveform representation okay so this is actually called as stand division multiplexing that means we are actually transmitting the samples of the first signal in this particular time slot in this time slot wherever there is a gap between the two samples i am transmitting this first sample of the second signal so this uh, time slot is used utilized by the second signal again the first signal second signal first signal second signal and so on okay so this is actually called time division multiplexing now as i explained earlier we have a low you know a low pass filter pre aliasing filter to remove the frequencies which are not required okay unwanted frequencies we can eliminate by using the pre aliasing low pass filter commutator switch which actually takes the samples from uh, n number of uh, inputs at the rate of uh, 2w hertz or more than that according to the sampling theorem and we actually interleave all these samples okay in the different time slots pulse modulator what is what it does it actually you uh, transforms the multiplex signal into a form suitable for transmission over the common channel okay so we have to match the characteristic of the channel with the signal characteristic so that job is done by the pulse modulator fine now pulse demodulator which actually performs the reverse operation of the modulator and the commutator actually connects the proper pulses okay to the proper destination that means it actually demultiplexes the uh, pulses and given to the proper destination that's all okay so this is actually called as a time division multiplexing as you are aware we have a frequency division multiplexing where different stations different signals are allocated different frequency slots but in the time division multiplexing the frequency slots or the bandwidth remains the same the bandwidth utilized by all the signals remains same but all these signals will utilize the same bandwidth for a different time slots okay so this concept is called time division multiplexing thank you for watching this video